Tim, I appreciate you joining us today and, and talking to us about uh, IFS coatings. Uh, they're thermoplastic. Uh, I know this is something that's fairly new to IFS. Tell us a little bit about it, the background of uh, how you all come out with uh, this product line. Well, first of all, Tim, thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm uh, very happy to be here. Um, we launched this product in uh, early 2020, and um, it was a culmination of a few years of R&D, uh, getting all the right equipment together and the right products together and um, being ready to launch. We now have, uh, I believe, five uh, distinct product lines out there that we are uh, pushing for various applications. And um, yeah, yeah, we're, we're very happy to get going in the field. Yeah. yeah. Tell me, was this something that, you know, when you go into R&D on uh, coming up with a thermoplastic, right? How, how long did you all have to work on that to come up with that type of product? So it really met the criteria that your customers were going to need for that. Well, we had the um, the initial um, product offerings that are uh, readily available, but those those came out, out pretty quick. It's, it's mm -hmm. pretty straightforward to, to get to mm -hmm. a, a good working product on those. Um, some of the more specialty ones that addressed this, that address some of the challenges that thermoplastics have um, been, been facing. Those took a while. We had to have some um, good concentrated work on those over a couple of years. Right. For those who may not know thermoplastic, wh what are those used on? Where would you normally see those products put on? So the thermoplastics that uh, IFS um, is working on, uh, as as well as some that are you know outside of what we're offering, they're they're generally used to solve a problem. Um, people would use a conventional powder coating wherever they could. Thermoplastics are generally um, to solve or resolve a, a, an issue that, that's out there. So mm -hmm. um, one of the quintessential ones is like a, an outdoor furniture, a, a park bench, if you will. Right. And um, these are things that if you were to coat it with a conventional powder coating, you might get five to seven you know, years out of it. And these park benches mm -hmm. really need to go for, you know, 10, 15 or even longer, as well as put up with a substantial amount of impact uh, resistance. Right. Yes. Yeah, so it's a tougher, much tougher, uh, 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 I would assume a much tougher finish uh, than compared to re just regular uh, powder coating, correct? But... Yes, it is. It is. And and that um, traditionally has come with a, a little bit of a trade-off because while um, the, and I'm talking specifically about copolymer thermoplastics, um, uh, our our Pyroplast PE20 um, is uh, the, the conventional you know, copolymer thermoplastics, and mm -hmm. that has always kind of come with a bit of a trade off. While it does have, you know, the the, the very high adhesion and 500% elongation, it'll stretch five at times its width before it'll snap. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it will move with the metal as the metal uh, gets deformed or impacts hit it. It will uh, it will take the hit and not chip off. Um, so that's very good. But the, the trade off has always been that. Um, with that flexibility and of the coating, you lose a little bit of the scratch resistance and the mar resistance that mm. um, you need in some applications. Mm. Gotcha. Yeah. And, uh, you know, talk about some of the products you've got, uh, specific product that you kind of want to talk about <laughs> with the in the uh, Puroplast line. Well, the one I wanted to highlight today is actually goes back to that that trade off. Uh, Puroplast mm -hmm. PE twenty one um, is a true copolymer. It has all the um, uh, properties and performance characteristics of a, of a true copolymer, but with much improved scratch and mar resistance. It really mm. fills that gap and allows thermoplastics of this nature to get into some applications where the aesthetics just weren't good enough under you know normal wear and tear. Right, right. Uh, talk to me about, is this, again, I, I just don't know this, is this any, can this be applied, any powder coater, can they adopt this and apply it through their regular equipment, or are there special needs for that? Um, you can generally use conventional equipment. You might need to turn some knobs, um, mm -hmm. uh, but when you're electrostatically spraying it, we haven't found a gun yet that wouldn't, you know, ultimately work if we didn't just, uh, you right. know, work with it. Um, but with thermoplastics also has come the ability to do things in a fluidized bed dip process where okay. you have a, a relatively, you, you have a, a, a um, tank of, of powder that's big enough to um, immerse the entire part in it. You preheat the part, the heat builds the film as it's in the tank and being agitated and you pull it out and you go into a post oven to finish off the, uh, off right. the cure cycle. Right. You know, I know IFS, you all do a lot of research and development. You work very closely with a lot of your customers to get feedback. Uh, you know, you mentioned, uh, you know, the 21. I guess is this things where you guys are constantly working to improve this product, getting a lot of feedback from your customers of what, uh, what they would like then? 
Yes, exactly. We're actually working with um, a um, sporting goods manufacturer uh, on, a, mm -hmm. on a face max application um, on this. And they wanted, um, we we're actually trying to, to get better abrasion uh, resistance. They were mm -hmm. very uh, uh, insistent on a very um, uh, high performance in the Tabor ab abrasion test. But as we kept lowering the coefficient of friction to get the better Tabor abrasion results, uh, as a side of uh, that, the, the, the scratch and the mar resistance just started going up through the roof. And so we were, mm -hmm. we were very pleased. And uh, we're, right. we use it as much for the scratch and mar resistance as we do the uh, um, added abrasion resistance right now. Right. I know sometimes that happens where you actually find a solution before there's a problem, right? You've actually, you've got it ready, right? You're getting better resistance, uh, better corrosion, better weathering and things like that. Uh, and, and like I said, I, we talked about you guys, we don't get too deep into it, but you're coming out with some other products uh, in, in, by the end of the year, correct? That'll be kind of in this uh, thermoplastic uh, line as well, correct? Yeah, yes, we are. We, we are coming out with some c completely different chemistries other than the uh other than the copolymer polyethylenes, and those will be uh, announced here with, you know, at least by the end of the year. Yes. Right. Exactly. And and like I said, do you see, I mean, thermoplastic, do you see more and more uses for those that people are being called for that more manufacturers who are specifying that they want a thermoplastic on a lot of their parts? Well, with, with the, um, with the advent of PE 21, we, we are starting to see more. And I, I can give you an example. Um, mm -hmm. uh, a, a lot of the big, big chain, uh, restaurants nationwide, you know, some of the more, um, uh, ones that have outdoor seating, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the burger joints, if you will, uh, mm -hmm. back, you know, 15, 20 years ago, uh, one of them chose to go with thermoplastics because it, um, it, even though it would get scuffed up by someone sitting on it, you know, with a pair of jeans, still after 10, 15 years, it would still be there. It would be the, the, the gloss would be knocked down a little bit, but it would still be there. The other main uh, burger chain joint decided to go with thermoset because it had the higher scratch resistance and um, it, it looked good for at least the, mm. the first five years. It looked better than the thermoplastic did, but in the long run, the thermoplastics, you know, give for performance for, you know, a longer period of time. And so that was, that was the trade-off now with PE 21 and the higher scratch resistance, we are starting to find new applications in those areas where the aesthetics with, our old with uh, conventional copolymer just just wasn't there right right interesting now you bet you know a lot of the fluidized bed that this might be used for and, and i guess it it is applied also with some spray guns i correct i mean i want to be correct and it, it does get applied with some of those our customers are about 50 50 by volume um okay but, but between gotcha. spray and, and dip and there, there there is one other way of applying it out there that's that's common uh but you don't see it as much and that's do a flame spray process where you are actually um mm -hmm. in training the powder in combustion gases and as it goes through the flame it splatters onto the uh substrate it, it's really good for field applications for things you can't pull back into a, a coating shop gotcha and, and so for powder coaters that are not applying a thermoplastic right now uh, what would it take to get them into it? If, if they call you up and say, "Hey, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to get into this. I'm getting some customers asking about this." What does it take uh, from a, an equipment standpoint, or, or, or is there any additional equipment? I know you said it could use their existing guns, but also maybe a fluidized bed. But really, I mean, it's not that hard to convert over and add that, does it? Or no, it, it should not be. Um, if uh, if they have a uh, if, if they're working on a, on a batch system where you are uh, uh, coating your parts one at a time or or at, at a batch at a time and putting it in the oven and taking it out, that's a very simple conversion. That's just uh, changing out the powder, maybe some some settings on the gun, and fine tuning in the ovens. If you're on a conventional, uh, if you're on a um, continuous line, uh, electrostatic spray line. Um, uh, other than just having more guns out there, um, if for some reason you needed to, to preheat a part to get film bill that was beyond what is, is normally done, um, there's uh, some, you might need to turn up your preheat oven or your dry off oven, or possibly even speed your lineup a little bit to get the part uh, over to the coating booth sooner before it cools down. So, but um, the answer to your question is it's, it's, it's a pretty straight changeover. Gotcha. That's great. And like I said, we'll be talking uh, later on uh, in a bit later this year when you guys are getting your nylon. But uh, again, I appreciate you uh, taking time out and explaining that to us. Sure. Happy to do it, Tim.